Well, you know how I said last week how nice it was, the weather, things were thawing out, the frost was coming out, we had some beautiful warm days. <laughs> Not anymore. Winter is back with a vengeance, and that's creating a few problems. Get to there and yeah. be done. Okay. It's frozen up again, which is not ideal. And in, I don't know, it's been 36 hours below freezing, um, below zero Fahrenheit last night, um, which means everything is frozen solid back in the barn. So all that digging, the trenches, all of that are frozen. What do we do now? That's the puzzle. Not the most helpful conditions. Well, there's nothing you can do about it. It's unfortunate because I know the plan was to maybe pour some drain footings, get some electrical dug in, all of that kind of stuff. But like, like you can't, you can't dig in this. We might as well uh, haul around the neighborhood and drop off a few bales of hay. One going to some sheep and two going to the horses.
this actually might be a first for me, is dropping a bale off and not having any of the horses come and grab it. That is how cold and windy and snowy it is. If they don't want to be out for some fresh hay, huh, sure must be a lovely day for everybody working in the barn. That really is not that far from us. And yet you can barely see that there is somebody over there pulling lines out of their stockpile. For being, what are we in, the second week of spring? Sure makes you wanna be ready for spring planting, doesn't it, on a day like this? Now this is much better weather. It did take a couple of days just to get this stuff thawed back out again out here because it did like it really was amazing how hard it froze how quickly everything froze back up so they couldn't even really do much digging at all but don't worry nobody was bored they still found stuff to do on one of those cold days and this is what we're going to go find out right now um murray was saying he got this side of the barn all done with curtains and motors and all that kind of stuff so we are going to go back here and check to see if we can actually get them opened up. Well, that's a flop. But then again, I have no idea what I'm doing. Like, it looks like this sh part should spin and then just like pull, like roll itself up. Like, you think that should spin, right? This part should be spinning, correct? I'm not losing my mind. Well, I guess we're not going to open these up after all. Mainly because I don't know what I'm doing. Whether I'm missing a lock on. I guess when Murray said, do you want me to show you? And I said, oh, I should be able to figure it out. I was wrong. Oh, well. We'll wait for that to be a Monday job. And then we'll get curtains opened up and we'll actually get some fresh air blowing through there. dumpster filled. That's the second of those big dumpsters that we have filled and my advice if you were ever building something like this is get one of those off the bat like at the beginning of the job because I think in our minds we thought oh we can keep up with you know burning the wood uh, sorting out the metal the leftover scrap metal into the metal pile and then we've got a little dumpster, so, you know, it'll keep up with the rest. And that was outrageous to think we could catch up with it, or keep up with it. And so we've been trying to catch up now with the fact, you know, finally just get the dumpster and throw most of the stuff in there. But it's full. They're not coming to pick it up for um, another couple of days. So instead, it is a nice day. Let's, let's at least get the burn barrel for you know, save a couple of buckets worth of scrap lumber.
All right, who's ready for an update on Billy Bob the Muskrat? I'm not sure where Billy Bob came from. Kids named him. Um, unfortunately, it's not the best news you've ever heard. Um, because, so we set this board up. We were hoping that Billy Bob would climb out. He did not by the next day. So then we said, okay, we clearly have to do something different because we can't leave him in there forever. Um, so we got this nice live trap. And the live trap works very well in that we would be able to put something in there, open the door when he steps on the uh, part where the food would be sitting, then the door would come crashing down, we'd take him out, we could take him back to the uh, stream way back. Everything would be lovely. I told the kids, you need to research what a muskratzy eats so that I can actually get that food for him. Cash came back and said fresh fish is one thing that they like to eat. And he suggested I go fishing to catch the fresh fish to be able to put in the trap. That sounded like a nice idea. However, I knew I would really not get the time to go fishing. And I'm not sure it would be a great excuse to do it. So I had a shrimp tray in the freezer. So I thawed that shrimp tray in a few hours brought a little bit out to put in the cage, had several pieces myself. It was high quality. I thought this would be good muskrat food. And when I came out, he had died. It was only like a few hours from when he was kind of moving up and down and around and seemed fine to when he wasn't anymore. So clearly this is not a great housing for an animal. I felt bad. Maybe, maybe we should have done things a little bit faster. Maybe he got into something he shouldn't have. Maybe, who knows what happened. It's an unfortunate end for Billy Bob. Some of the other things that got done this week because it was another heck of a week. Um, the one news is the dynamic framing crew has left. They're actually, for the most part, done. They've got the office area to finish up. Um, and, you know, so they kind of wanted to wait till concrete was poured so that nothing messed up the walls or the trim or things like that. So they're going to wait for the concrete to get poured and then they're going to come back for, you know, really just a few days to finish up. But otherwise, like, they're wrapped up, which is awesome. Um, including, this is actually one of the very neat things of the week, is the opening for the barn. Okay, maybe it doesn't have the same dramatic effect when all of these lifts are in the way but like it is still freezing at night and so we have to put this tarp up and my great engineering skills thought let's put lifts in the way and then hang the tarp from it and it actually does work very well and then in the day I cut part of the tarp off the air can flow through um, you know just kind of keep air moving around is ideal and then hang it up at night if it's gonna freeze so yeah, maybe it doesn't have the same effect, but like it actually is amazing how tidy, like there's a new beam up there, it's all resupported, it's all done up because it's so much wider. And like, uh, I have been truly impressed by how careful they are with detail. Like I know it's a barn, it's still just a barn, but you want a barn to look good and clearly they want a barn to look good. And like detail and things like that, even here with the trim, they've got it taped up just to hold to make sure it doesn't go anywhere while everything dries. Like to get everything just so finely trimmed up is, it's just a really nice thing to have. So we're excited that we're kind of moving on beyond just the framing stage and actually getting to like the guts of the building. Oh, there's one. There's one. There's one. There's more. That's exciting because that's electrical. The plan is there's 32 lights going in up here. Uh, and basically what they're doing is they're running wiring for it up top. That's what they did on those cold days when they couldn't dig the underground, is they got up above and they started running um, the electrical. So Jake and Marshall were climbing up there. I think Colton did a bit of it too, um, the electricians. And like to be able to start getting these stages together is, is even better. Now, we don't have 
any electrical coming into the barn yet. So it's not like one day all of a sudden all the lights are going to be on in the next week or two. That's going to take some time. But it does mean that when they do run the main into this barn and get the panel hooked up, there's going to be a lot of things that can flip on with the flick of a switch. Last thing I want to show you, and then we'll take off for another week, is look at the nice windows in here. Remember when I showed you a few weeks ago the other windows that were there that, like, we weren't sure were right? Well, they got changed out, and I am, like, thrilled with these. Like, look at how nice this whole thing is going to get built up. Actually, maybe built up to more, like, about this height. So look at that. We just got a nice, clear line of sight to both robots right from here. How awesome is that? This is really awesome to see. Now, we do have more and more cables and I mean the electricians they certainly know how to work a shovel because they've been doing it a lot not like you're getting any equipment in here so they're running it all underground here um, we've got like networking cables that are coming in and out from here they're going underground they're crossing there's more in this room in here like look at what's that four conduit lines coming in here another cable there you come over here I don't even know how many are here. One, two, three, maybe four or five in there. The communication line has to be away from the electrical line so there's no interference. So that's why there's another one a few feet off. Like, good thing they're labeling everything because it is getting pretty wild in terms of all the stuff that is going to be underground. Just to keep this area tidy up above, um, just how much goes in and the planning that goes in to make sure that these things run and run well. You get all the plumbing done up, more conduit, more lines, more conduit, more water, more conduit. Like there's been a lot of planning to go into this. And the fact that this is coming to this stage, getting some grade to it and all that, fingers crossed. If it stops freezing at night, we might get some concrete poured.